cheated. Eddie Guerrero cheated with that move to the top rope. And he cheated. Frog oh. splash. Frog splash. Yes. Yeah. I have fond memories of my childhood waking up on a Saturday morning and rushing downstairs to watch reruns of Friday Night Smackdown. Me and my siblings were so intrigued by the storylines and larger than life characters presented to us but amongst all the talent there was one superior, technically gifted, charismatic and entertaining superstar that filled us with immense joy and that man was Eddie Guerrero. Guerrero's in-ring character was that of a crafty, resourceful wrestler who would do anything to win a match. His famous mantra of cheat to win despite being a heel for much of his career he actually became one of the most popular wrestlers in and outside of the ring. Throughout his career, Eddie encountered various substance misuse problems outside of the ring, including alcoholism and addiction to painkillers. This would become a focal point behind his in-ring storylines in the years to come. Eddie's story is one of redemption and amongst all odds facing your demons and conquering them. In this video I'm going to be looking at the late great Eddie Guerrero and how he fought his personal demons to achieve the pinnacle of sports entertainment by winning the WWE title at No Way Out 2004. Inducted into the Hall of Fame of 2006, Eddie Guerrero was born in 1967 in El Paso, Texas. Born into a legendary wrestling family, Eddie Guerrero's destiny was to become a wrestling legend. Eddie spent his early years in Texas and New Mexico. He competed in the amateur division of the University of New Mexico on an athletic scholarship, slowly learning his family's craft before being taken under the wing of his legendary father, Gory Guerrero, where he trained along with his cousin Chavo. After spending 13 years or so working across promotions like AAA, ECW, WCW, Eddie would find his way in the WWE. Eddie was thriving, he was accomplished and looked poised to pursue his birthright and maintain the legacy of the Guerrero name. However, his first run in WWE was cut short just one year after he signed with the company. He developed an addiction to pain medication stemming from his 1999 car accident and in May 2001, Eddie was sent to rehab. This didn't resolve his problems as on November 9th, 2001, Eddie was arrested for driving under the influence. Eddie was subsequently released from the WWE three days later. Eddie had officially reached rock bottom. It was at this point that Eddie Guerrero knew that something had to change. He had to live by his family's legacy. He had a family to support and he had to slowly start earning his way back into the WWE. Eddie Guerrero would continue to work the independent circuit and show that he was destined for greatness. He worked for promotions like Ring of Honor and Australian promotion, World Wrestling All-Stars. This was where he interestingly had a match with CM Punk and Rey Mysterio uh, for the IWA Mid-South Heavyweight Championship, which he actually went on to win. Win. It wasn't long before Eddie gathered the attention again of WWE who came calling in 2002 and told him to return back to the company. Eddie would make his return to the WWE and slowly start climbing the ladder and reinventing himself consistently. Eddie would spend the next few years as a single star and aligning himself with his nephew Chavo. They formed the tag team Los Guerreros. In contrast to their previous WCW storyline, his nephew and Eddie both adopted the mantra of we lie, we cheat and we steal. In order to push the new tag team, vignettes were produced. It was just a breath of fresh air and the duo would entice the fans with their antics by throwing pool parties and forcing their way into a rich lady's house. Is my pool all right? Oh yeah, Grandma, just a couple more tips. Yeah, yes, the charismatic personalities shone through and it was a sign of bigger things to come for Eddie. After winning titles along the way with multiple intercontinental US and tag title wins and matches like the Latino Heat parking lot brawl match for the United States Championship with the then doctor of thugonomics John Cena, Eddie had officially worked his way back up to the top. It seemed as though Eddie had done everything possible to grab Vincent K. McMahon's imaginary brass rings to excel and reach the main event status of the WWE. And that exactly was it. Eddie had done enough. And on the 29th of January 2004 episode of SmackDown, Eddie won a 15-man Royal Rumble style match to 
earn a shot at the greatest award in professional wrestling, the WWE Championship. However, it looked like an uphill battle facing a massive roadblock on his road to redemption in the form of the then WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. The match had a David vs Goliath feel to it with the cards stacked against Eddie along with the physical presence of Brock Lesnar and the mind games being played by Lesnar during the build up to No Way Out. It seemed as though Eddie had no chance. The build up was mainly consisting of Eddie's years of substance misuse being used against him and how he didn't have the right to call himself a champion. Eddie had a point to prove and he did not want his legacy to go down as an addict but instead he wanted his legacy to go down as WWE champion. It seemed as though Eddie's demons would continue to haunt him and play on in his mind especially leading up to the match. Against all odds, Eddie's spirit didn't die and he continued to back himself and explained how he had to do this for not only himself but also for his family and prove to them that he actually is the man that they want him to be. Eddie gave a phenomenal speech the weeks leading up to the match. I disgrace my race, I disgrace my family and I disgrace myself. Day by day, by the grace of God, I have earned the respect of my kids again. See, when I step into this ring, yeah, bro, I am addicted. I'm addicted to the high that I get from them. You can just tell it's straight from the heart. It's honest and there's such a three-dimensional layer here and we can all relate. I mean, we've all been through problems and Eddie Guerrero was a relatable superstar. He made us feel like he was one of us and that's what made him so special. On the 15th of February, 2004, at No Way Out, Eddie became WWE Champion and he defeated Brock Lesnar in the main event to win the championship. The images of Eddie lunging into the crowd and celebrating with his mother and the fans still resonate with me today. Eddie is celebrating with the people who never gave up on him. This was a special moment in the history of WWE as there's been so many times where these larger than life characters, I mean, they've never been humanized, but Eddie was humanized and he was relatable and his story is a tale of tragedy and redemption overcoming the odds and submitting his legacy as one of the greatest to ever do it. There was This man was something greater than a sports entertainer. He was a legend and he will always be remembered in my heart and in the heart of all of the fans of professional wrestling as he is still revered today. Eddie Guerrero will no longer be called Eddie. Tonight, Eddie Guerrero will simply be known as 